Hey guys and welcome back to another Unratchet 4 tutorial. In today's video I'm going to be going over physics constraints and how they kind of work and in this example I'm going to be setting up this light which we're going to be able to swing by walking into it and also this door here in which we'll swing open again when walking into it. So let me hit play and show you what we're going to make today. So again if I just walk into this door as you'll see it's going to swing open like so and it's going to go all the way around just because I haven't set up any walls or anything to stop it and also if I walk into this light it's also going to swing like this. Now again, you can change these to set them up and customize them however you want and you can obviously change the physics to get it working differently for you as well. The main part is the mass and again I'm going to be going over all of this today, setting it up and I'll leave a link in the description down below to the meshes in which I'm using as well. So this is what I'm going to be setting up today, so without further ado, let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So the first thing I'm going to set up is I'm going to do the light BP. Now I am going to keep this one here as a reference just because the meshes I've used I've set up specifically for this but obviously you'll change it for your meshes. But what you're going to want to do to start off for you is right click, go to blueprint class, create an actor and I'm going to name this light bp1, opening it up straight away like so. What you want to do in here is add component adding a static mesh like so, naming this light or lamp main or whatever you want. So I'm going to name mine lamp main and I'm going to set the static mesh to be my lamp which I have so for me that's lamp main. Now again you'll see that this specific mesh is very big and off center which is why I've already got it set up in a different blueprint but I'm still going to go over how to do it. And you're just going to want to add in all the static meshes which you want for your light. So I've got light main and I'm also going to have light base which for me is then going to be light base and then last but not least I'm also going to have light handle making sure that this is now my light handle or lamp handle, sorry not light, there we go. So now I've got this set up like so. You don't have to technically have them in these three separate parts, however it probably will make it look a little bit better for you. Again it's not necessary but it will make it look a bit better, especially if you have the main one here which is what you want to be swinging, which could be the main and the handle, that's what you want to swing, and then you have the base which is where it's going to be connecting to. So you've got the swinging part and the connector. So if I go over to my light BP here, you can see this is how I've got mine set up. So I've got my lamp main and my lamp base here like so. Attached to my lamp main I've got a spotlight just because again this is for a light actor. And I've also got a cable instead of the handle just because I felt that that personally looked a bit better. To add this you can add component and just simply search for cable, adding it like so and then just make sure that you attach the end component to lamp main or whatever it's called for you and it will connect straight to it. Again, because mine's off-centered, I've had to change the end location ever so slightly. Very simple to set up. But this is just the aesthetic part of the lamp and the light BP, which I imagine, again, you've already got set up. So now we're going to actually go into the physics constraint part of it. So again, I'll do this in a new one to show you how to set it up. So we're going to add a component up in the top left, and we're going to add a physics constraint, like so. And we want to make sure that we can open up component name 1 and 2 here, like so. Now, what we're going to do is in component name 2, we're going to add in the name of the component which we want to swing, which for me is going to be lamp main. Make sure you spell it exactly the same, and if it has worked, you'll see a blue box will come up around the object in which you want to swing. So again, I want this one to swing, so that's what I'm highlighting. What I'm also going to do is move the physics constraint to where I want the center of swing to be, pretty much. So I'm going to move my lamp over ever so slightly so it's centered, and you can see my physics constraint now is in the center here, this again isn't perfect which is why again I have it set up in a different actor already. But that's now centered so you can see my physics constraint is here where the red circle is that is where it's going to be swinging from so that's sort of the center of gravity if that makes sense to you so where it swings it will swing around this point here so wherever you move this to it will swing there so I have it here it's going to be swinging like this if I have it up here which makes sense for me because this is again where the joint is from the handle it's then going to swing around this like so which makes perfect sense for me. Now you can add this in component name 1 however I found earlier that component name 2 works better for me and in component name 1 what you can do again is add in the anchor point which for me would be lamp base like so. Again this is where you really just mess about with it to get it perfect for you and your specific mesh because again it's going to be different for each individual one that you use so you're just going to want to change it each time and that's really all you need to do to set this up. Because this is a light, I want it to be able to swing in all directions, I don't need to change the linear or angular limits. I'll do a door example next where I will show you what you'll need to change them to. We can compile, save that, that's all we need to do in here. 
What I'm going to do is go back into my other light VP, which is already set up, select the physics constraint, and you can see this is all set up the exact same. If I select my lamp base, my lamp main, sorry, that's the thing which is actually swinging, we're going to search for mass in the details, and I ticked mass in kilograms and set it to 100. This here is the best way I've found to actually change how much force is going to go into the swinging. So the heavier it is, the less it will swing because the more force it needs. Without this ticked, I found that it was very volatile and very violent in its swinging, so ticking it, making it heavier, requires more energy, which looks a lot better for me. And again, you can increase this or lower this to get the value perfect for you. If you think it doesn't look too good, change this value again. So again, I think there's other ways of doing it as well, but this is the best way I've found. We're gonna compile, save this, and this should now be our physics constraint setup for a swinging light. So what you want to do now is place it in the level like I have here. If we hit play, we can go up to it and see that if we were to walk into it, what's going to happen is it's going to swing like so. Again, this is the exact same one we've just set up, working the exact same way. We're going to bump into it and it's just going to start swinging using the in-engine physics already set up for us, working perfectly like so. And because I've attached the light actor onto the meshes so they're parented, it's going to be moving around with it as well. So that's the light one set up. Now I'm going to show you the example of the door. So I'm just going to open up my door BP because again, the only thing you'll need to have set up already is the static mesh, which again, I've already done. So this is simply just a static mesh of a door. Once you've added that in, we're going to add in a physics constraint, which we have here. So let me just delete this, add a component, and I'm going to add a physics constraint like so. And what I'm going to do is just move this to be about here. So you can add two, so have two hinges, but you only really need one. And I'm just gonna have this at the center on the left so we have a hinge here. So the door is gonna rotate around this point like so. Hope that one makes sense as well. Then we're just gonna do the same thing. Component name two, we're gonna change this to be the name of our door static mesh, which for me is door. Again, you'll know if it's worked if it has a blue outline. So it's just the name of your static mesh here. And again, this can be in component one or component two like so. And if it's component one, it'll be a red outline. Now, because this is a door, we don't want to rotate on every single angle. So we don't want to be able to rotate it like this. So let me select the door. We don't want to be able to rotate it like this or like this. We only want to rotate it like that. But obviously on the angle there, which it will be because that is where our physics constraint is placed. So if we select our physics constraint again, we're going to scroll down and we're going to make sure that we lock swing motion two and twist motion on the angular limits. So swing one motion is free everything else is locked, which means it's only going to be able to swing on the z-axis which we've just set up. Scroll down again, or above that, sorry, make sure that the linear limits are also all locked, so it's not going to move linear, which is up, down, or forward, or back. So now to hit compile, save, we can test this from now, and again, it is as simple as that. All we do is add in a physics constraint, pretty much all set up for us. We just need to modify some things and specify where it's going. Also, again, I have changed the mass on the door, and I might even increase it a bit further to maybe, let's say, 300 kilograms. So we really need a lot of force to open the door. So I have to walk into it, you'll see that it's going to open like so. And again, if this was next to a wall or anything, it would stop better. But again, what you do is you just walk into it to open and close it like so, which I think is a nice little feature which might work well on saloon doors or barn doors or anything like that, really. So I think that'll be it for this video. So we've done everything we want to do. We've set it up, so we've set up physics constraints on two different actors, one of which being a light, one of which being a door. So we can walk into them and they're just gonna start swinging like so. And you can use this and apply this knowledge anywhere you want to set up physics constraints. I've just gone over the basic part of how to set them up and how to use them, given two different examples for two different use cases. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and hope you did find this video helpful. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.